thank you for staying with us right here on Morning Express. It is now five minutes after seven. Time for us to look at the way it is. And today we'd like to concentrate on the education sector. Children are going back to school starting today and the whole of this week. And of course, parents are concerned. Remember, last year we had a teacher strike of uh, one of the longest strikes that we had in the country, which went for a period of five weeks. And it was still not resolved fully because there were certain agreements that were put pending. And uh, the teachers' unions have actually threatened and said, should this agreement not be honored, they may be going on strike again this term. So education sector, of course, has had uh, a lot of turmoil. And that's what we'd like to talk about. Remember, you're welcome to participate. You can do this via Twitter. The Twitter handle is at KTN News. Or you can also tweet me directly. And that's at Michael G. Gitonga. Let me introduce my guest this morning. And uh, sitting right on my immediate left is Evelyn Jepkime, who is an education expert. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you very much. And on my extreme left, we have Musa Undunda, who is the Secretary General for Kenya National Parents Association. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you. Now, let's start, first of all, I'll start with you Evelyn and the concern of the education sector do we have uh, a problem that is likely to end soon looking at where we are today and looking at where we are coming from um, you know I think that what we're seeing now uh, sounds like a crisis but it's a problem that has been you know that has been there for a long time it's a question of the cost of education in kenya it's a cost of it's a question of quality of education and it it bites now because parents have to go back i mean have to send their children back to school and the cost is immediate it's now and and this is the time that we're feeling uh, i don't have the money and uh, I need to buy my kids books. I need, uh, you know, to get the children to school. But from my point of view, uh, and as a researcher, I think the problem has, has always been there with us. Mm -hmm. uh, question of accountability. How accountable are schools to the Ministry of Education, for example? Mm -hmm. okay? How accountable are parents um, to, to the system, as it were? And how accountable are the teachers as well to, to the system? So in my view, the, it's a whole question of leadership and a problem of quality of education. Of education. Yeah. All right, Musa Undunda, do you think we're getting closer to the end of this crisis for the education sector? Mm, I want to say, Bwana um, Kitonga, uh, one, I want to thank you very much for inviting me this morning. Um, I, it's, it's, I can say that we are far from getting a solution. And the reason why um, we are far from getting the solution, one, as a country we have not realized that we have a new constitution, we have a new education act, we have the regulations, you know, which are guiding education in this country, and uh, there is quite a lot. Number two, uh, the problems of uh, education started in 2002 when the NAG government came in. When the NAG government came in in 2002, they came with a lot of reforms. And I want to salute the retired president because he came up. And I want to salute the first PS uh, who drove that um, initiative, uh, that initiative mm -hmm. Professor Karega Mutai, mm -hmm. and the late Saitoti, may God rest his soul. Uh, these two gentlemen drove the agenda, and they were in touch. One of the things that I liked so much, people don't know what we do, but we, are, we, we have a lot of information. We have a network in this country. Ask me what's happening this morning in Lam, where I'll give you the information. Because we have a system of getting information across the country. Uh, they made sure that they created what they call a stakeholders forum. Where you don't bring everybody. Bring each group. Tell us. Give, give us the dose here. And that way, they, they made sure they had a grip of whatever. Now, when, because of political, and I'm happy that now uh, our current government is consistent. Because of not changing people that way. When Saitoti left and Karega Mutai, confusion came there. And the people are now, the ministers and the spheres who are coming in, do not have institutional memory of where we have come from, and that's where the problem is. Because they were very firm in whatever. The basic education act had come. And I remember in 2007, we were very hot. And I was very grateful because the president himself intervened because he saw how things were coming in. Um, the same thing applies with the... Uh, um, uh, with, uh, with Mutula Kionso. May, may also God bless that man. Mutula, when we sat down, he told us, I will come and I will give a solution. The solution is not calling the press conference or calling uh, uh, the stakeholders meeting that the ministers called this one. 
They do not give a total um, healing in this country by introducing Basic Education Act and especially Section 92. That section it is applied. I can tell you for free. That section has done everything because it gives the minister a lot of immense powers to complain to 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 Kiriako Tobiko. You don't need to call directly and tell them come to Nairobi. You need to complain. Tell the Inspector General. Can you implement? And these people are rest of the country. So the problem is that one. They have not really grasped what the basic education is all about. Mm -hmm. And that's the problems that we are having. Mm -hmm. And what you see, uh, what we are seeing in the country, it's a problem. The other thing that I can tell you, things are not going to be healed in this country until the Section 53 of the basic education, which talks about the issues of governance and management of education in this country, is the overall governance is the minister, not DSE. And the MPs, and this is what I'm appealing to the president this morning, and the leader of majority, Please stop. We don't want confusion because the minister and the peers are helpless. These guys are helpless. Can they scrap, amend the act? Section 11M of the TSE Act. And I want them to refer to that one. Okay. Now, I, mm -hmm. just, just please. Mm -hmm. The reason why we are saying so is because when you look at section, the article that has created TSE, it gives seven functions. And everything said they shall employ teachers, they will uh, deploy teachers. There is nothing called headship. There is nothing like principles of So is our, is our issue here uh, it's uh, legal. leadership? It is legal. Mm -hmm. First of all, before we do this, thing, actually, Professor Gidu must now move with speed. So, so is our issue in education right now an issue of leadership? It's, a leg, it's not actually is a legal issue that mm -hmm. must be unlocked. Mm -hmm. So that principles and headers can come directly under the ministry. Okay. Now, what, this is why I'm saying so. Is because when you look at Article 2 7, it talks about teachers. The role of the teachers is that is the, their work is to teach. It is the work of the, fun, of the functions of TSC. But issues of management and governance, mind you, management finances, these fee structures. Governance is the issue of both management. Now that one is the E is the prerogative full of the minister. Nobody else. And actually, if you look at the act, 50, 53, 1 and 2, it is I'll cut you short, Mr. Undunda, <laughs> because I want to, to bring in uh, Evelyn here. And Evelyn, looking at the rising cost, and of course there's that right. legal battle that is going on, right. and uh, the fact that our education doesn't seem to be taking off from a certain uh, level. What is your take in terms of the cost that is going up? The textbooks are going up. We have school fees, which we're going to discuss shortly, uh, Ms. Undunda. Yeah. Um, and the quality of education offered. Are our children getting a raw deal? Right. Let me start with the question of the quality of education because it then it then flows over to the cost it flows over to um, the kind of instruction that goes on in class mm. and um, the, the question of quality of education you, you, you remember under KESP we talked about we want all children to go to school and 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 we did well having children under FPE go, go back to school and I think we kind of we, we almost had an enrollment of over 90 percent but then the question now is, so we are sending kids to school. What is going on in school? Many parents um, will, will tell you, for example, that when they go to school, they'll find in one class you have 103 children. I mean, it, it's not possible to have one teacher be able to cater for the needs of all those children, considering their, their, their different aptitude levels. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that is where the, the issue begins, because then... Um, the teacher feels that they are doing what is beyond what is expected of them. And, and so you begin to, to, to hear things about um, we need tuition. Tuition, that is cost. Now, the other, on the flip side of it, the materials. Um, when we look at, uh, so the, the, we, we had hoped that under FPE we would get um, a ratio of one to three children, one textbook to three children. I am sure that there are very few schools that have been able to attain that ratio. Mm. The reason um, is because, you know, as, um, as Musa will tell you, the booksellers and, and you know, and head teachers, uh, you know, somehow we, we, when we, the capitation goes to school, but somehow we don't see a correlation between the time when the money is released and the sales of, of the books in, 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 uh, among the booksellers. So the question is, where does this money go? this capitation and and so the question is does does the ministry follow up 
to make sure that the money actually does what it what it is intended to mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. and so the, the whole question of accountability so the head teacher mm -hmm. who, who who does the head teacher report to is it the teacher service commission or is it then the, 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 the Ministry of Education? Mm -hmm. So the ministry is the one releasing the money and therefore should be the one looking for accountability from the head teachers. But then the head teacher is employed by, by a different uh, body. body. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have all you that. Have yeah, so you have, so you have mm -hmm. this leadership crisis that then leaves the parent helpless. Mm -hmm. and, 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 then, and then the other side of it, what we are talking about is the cost of the books. You know, if we are talking about attaining Vision 2030, and we are actually saying that literacy is important, numeracy is important, then we need to reconsider the question of taxing materials that are supposed to enhance okay. that skill. All right, yeah. uh, Musao, let me come to you. And the, the question here is, given this rat race that we seem to be having, and this cycle of uh, war between the union and uh, TSC, is the ministry, first of all, in touch with what's going on on the ground? Uh, what I can tell, and I want to tell Kenyans clearly, is that the Ministry of Education is not in touch with, the, with what is the, down there. And uh, uh, the reason why I'm saying so, and uh, I, I want to come back before I go to that place. Uh, we are talking the issue of textbooks. Right. And I was in the tax force that was appointed by the government in 2003. And if you look at the implementation strategy that we were using, the ratio of one to one would have been achieved by now. Yeah. Look at it. I have been also in the tax force that was talking about well, this. What was the strategy? The strategy was that by the year 2010, every child was going to have. The reason is this. And nobody in this country should tell you the money we are getting is not enough. It is just, a, it's just madness. Why is it? Because when you buy textbooks for standard ones, the next year, next year, those books have been left and somebody's yeah. got to call So by the time we get, we had projected by within the 10, uh, within a period of 10 years, by from 2003 and uh, 2010, we would have achieved that ratio. Let me tell you, I want you to get what you call a value for money audit. Mm. Look at that audit. I have it in my office. The textbooks that have gotten lost, which cannot be accounted for in our public schools, are 52 million textbooks, yeah. worth 8 billion. So going to the shops, what we did as a tax force was to ensure that, first of all, let's stop the issue of parents going to buy books. And that has been there. Now, look at it. These fee structures, one of the things that we did as a tax force was to, 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 to include, I mean, to come up with a voted on tuition, which means buying of textbooks should not, is actually is not the role of the parents. Yeah. It is the role of the government. And the government has taken it. The only problem is that the people are interpreting those uh, the, those, those voters were not inducted. And that's why I'm wondering when you are saying, oh, the prices have gone up. My brother, look at the implementation matrix that we used. Nothing should be called going to bookshops because the government is paying it in private. So, but, but, now, but, but evidently, uh, my, my parents are still going to buy books yes, for their because children. Because they're friend, not in schools. The ministry has failed in civic education. And that's why we are going on air to tell people the truth about this matter. The reason why we are doing so is because these books, the other day I'm very happy with the CIDs of Kitale because there is a, there is a way where people are stealing textbooks and uh, we, we, we mapped and we were able to arrest these people because they are using motorbikes to sell those things to Southern Sudan. Mm -hmm. Textbooks, my friend, what I am telling Kenyans and this is what I'm telling the president, if you look at section 60 of the Basic Education Act, this business of releasing capitation grants to schools is not enough. Can you account for the money? And I am up with what yeah. Madame is saying. Accountability is what is lacking in education. My friend, when the money is released, go to those schools the following day. The other day, I was in um, those sides of Teso. I want to give you a very interesting. This, the, the chairman of the school committee, and the treasurer and the, and the, and the head teacher, were fighting in the bank. Because they were fighting the money in here, and now I'm going to when it came the other day, when you were cooler, Saini will cooler. So let me tell you. So now, if, the, if, if, if that is the case, <laughs> Musa Undunda, then aren't, aren't there agencies that are in place to ensure they deal with that? How is it that these books are disappearing and they're not accounted for? Let me tell yeah. you. And the same thing with the laptop. And I have told Kenyans, even the laptop was that they go to school, there are people already who have opened shops for them to be stolen, to be used for other things. Because implementation is the but issue. Sound, you know, you're making claims here that we cannot verify when you say that there are people who even open shops. No, I, no, no, I, I can say I was, I'm saying we have usually been saying it's, it's not a claim of anybody. Okay. I, I don't insure that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. What we are saying is textbooks, 
There is a lot of conspiracy. Can I tell you one thing? And I want to tell Kenyans. For the last 13 years, 15 years, no audit has ever been carried, far audit, of the funds that government is taking to schools, mm -hmm. both in primary and secondary. Mm -hmm. Number two, I want to give you a fee structure here which is very damning. In this fee structure, the government is giving a capitation grant of 10,000 shillings. Now, I have these schools, and that's why, instead of the minister telling Kenyans, oh, bring, uh, bring the fee structures, well, surely, you get in touch with us because we know our metric. We have a very wonderful program that we know to track down whatever is happening. Now, this school, as the capitation grant of the government, that the government has given of 10,000, plus the one of the parents, they have added it and they have said, you must pay 82,000 shillings in total. In other words, even the government capitation grant is coming in. Now, these are issues that we must, one, and this is an advice to the minister free of charge, that as a quick measure, the first thing, because he is empowered by law under section 53, let all the bank accounts of schools, a minister official be a signatory, so that when we draw the money, they are able to track They're it. able to track it. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I want to come to you, Evelyn, yes. and uh, let's talk solutions. <coughs> Where do we need to start? Okay, he has mentioned that one of the things that need accountability evidently yeah. becoming a major issue. And accountability here is not just in the funds. No. But also accountability. Uh, Kenya apparently is uh, leading in yeah. terms of absenteeism of, yes, of, of it is. teachers. It's the first in the world, which is Among very first, worrying. Yes. Among the first in the world. Yeah. How do we uh, deal with that? I'll come to you, Musao. So, um, there is a lot of literature um, in, in countries that have, that have actually Succeeded. gone ahead mm -hmm. of where we are. And the first thing is um, to make sure that the systems are clear. Okay, how, how do we make the systems clear? Let's, let's not have this ambiguity around leadership and accountability. The lines of accountability should be very, very clear. Um, one of the things that, um, that I think is, is bedeviling our system is that we do not have enough quality assurance out there in the field so that they can be able to actually um, you know, follow up what is happening in schools. You will find accounting, for example, as three, um, you know, uh, what we used to call D castles. So you have a county that has about six districts, what were districts before, and they have only three officers. How can you take care of that amount of schools? Because then you will need to visit the schools. There are certain things that you will need to look at. And, uh, but also the question of capacity. Um, are, are our head teachers really prepared to lead and to be able to, to account, both in terms of instruction, the quality of instruction that goes on in schools, but also in terms of management and leadership. Because that's really where this, issues, all these things the begin. Mm -hmm. Because if we, are, if we are among the leading in, in, in teacher absenteeism, the first person, the first accounting person is the head teacher. Mm -hmm. Are they in touch? Can they be able to influence their teachers? Do they have a vision within the school that the head teachers can be drawn to, to say, say that we really want this school to work? So that as we, as we are looking at the bigger things at policy level and at the legal level, the school is functioning. But as it is, schools are not functioning. You will find that the head teacher is out there doing his business. The, the, the teachers and, and, and research has shown some of the teachers actually get from four leavers and pay them some amount of money to go to school and teach while they, you know, they run their own businesses. Mm -hmm. So that is where we need to begin um, talking about wh what is happening to our children in schools. And, and Wezo tells us all the time that our children are not learning. But, you know, I think it is time we, we change the narrative mm -hmm. uh, and, and really begin to say, so what do we need to do? Mm -hmm. First of all, we need to help the schools to, to run. Are the teachers prepared? One of the things that we, t we keep talking about, and, and last night I was uh, laughing with some of my friends, um, that teachers need motivation. What is motivation in, in, in our terms? We need Money. to take our <laughs> teachers to Dubai. We need to take our teachers to Kigali and all these other places. Motivation for a teacher is to make sure that they have the tools of trade and they are competent. So you have teachers who are coming out of teacher training colleges. They, they, all they did was for the Kenya National Exam Council to give them certificates. <laughs> but really, they are not prepared to, to face what is in, in reality. They, they have the theory, but the reality is a totally different matter. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, and that becomes a demotivating factor. So we need to figure out a way to make sure that our teacher 
training colleges uh, curriculum is up to speed up With. to the 21st century okay and just to mention here that uh, we had invited the TSC <coughs> secretary uh, not the TSC uh, the NAT secretary general Wilson Sosion uh, to be with us in the studio to represent the teachers but he was not able to make it but let me come to you Musao and is this the point then we need to push for co performance contracts um, because that's one thing that has been resisted for one reason or the other but is it time for us to actually have that because that maybe can deal with uh, the issue of uh, absenteeism mm -hmm. it can also deal those a survey that was uh, conducted i think it was two weeks ago yeah, last yeah, yeah, week uh, where the, yes by 65 percent yes of the teachers that we have in class are not competent in the subjects they teach absolutely now let me first of all before i go there i want to explain about the absenteeism and i want to thank minister and even the world bank report let me tell you this the issue of education sector the president the deputy must stamp the authority one can i tell you one of the biggest problem of absurdism and even doing business in whatever is because 90 percent of teachers who are teaching are teaching their own villages mm. go to cumberland where i come from 90 percent are cucumbers and that's why you find performance so bad in primary schools and even in, uh, in other schools because we're teaching your mother tongue can they if kenyans can work anywhere why are you saying i can't go to mandera i can't go to whatever let them Actually, that should be the new here resolution of the government that no teacher is going to teach in his own village. I can tell you for free, things are going to change. That's the first thing to address the issue of absurdism. Number two, contract performance must actually they must stamp whoever wants to go on strike, let them go. But my friend, results are required mm -hmm. because why should somebody say we don't want? You we cannot be talking about salaries. When, when Nat and, uh, and uh, the uh, Kupetu were on strike, we said we are going to support them. Because the six international standards on education, look at them. One of the, one of the standards is that they, they want, uh, well, they're saying well-trained teachers, uh, well-remunerated. We are saying, okay, let them be paid. But if you are paid, can we see the performance? Yeah. Can we see? And that performance is there. So I am telling TSE, stand on your feet. Let the government... Tell every teacher if you cannot resign, if you cannot, you cannot, you cannot um, sign In a contract. When are you money? We have a lot of people who are looking for job. Number two, which you have not mentioned, is about we have a shortage of ninety thousand teachers, close to ninety thousand teachers, and you find the the teacher people ratio is very is uh, very minimal. The question that we are asking in this country is why should we concentrate? Teachers in the urban towns and the rural areas and other. I'm just coming down from all the ways from Kilifu on the inside. And you find here are young kids, they don't have a teacher. Yet here in Nairobi, there are people there. Can the government make a serious decision so that we remove this kind of thing? I am happy that uh, the, the, the TSC made a move to, uh, of employing teachers. Uh, I mean, uh, teachers on relief. And uh, now unions are bust. We went to court, we were joined. And I'm happy that the judge has made an order that... This, the, 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 they must employ because we cannot transfer the issue of employment to parents. Mm -hmm. It is the work of the TSC as required by law. So that is an issue that's there. Number two, look at the issue of um, uh, uh, where you are saying they are not competent. The problem now lies with the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Look at the teacher training colleges, my friend. You go to a teacher training college and look at the curriculum. It is so funny that a teacher training college, there is no specialization like universities. You are, it's a jungle everything. You get a D in mathematics and you are there also doing it to, to go and teach. That's why we are performing somebody. So the, we need to agree, and I'm happy that the ministry now has taken an initiative of first of all reforming the curriculum. Let us look at the quality of the people who are being trained. Number two, why should you give somebody in a school teaching? A school teaching for 20 years and you don't take them for refresher course. Mm -hmm. You also lose that kind of thing. So the reason why you find they are not teaching is because one, the government must address the issue of keeping one person in a station for many years. I have this judgment from Justice Leona. He just gave a judgment the other day. And I, when I was looking at it, he has criticized those kinds of things. When you look at this judge, he has looked at the, a lot of areas where he's saying the failure of the government or the ministry is this and that and that. Why am I saying so? If you take, if you take a, a somebody and keep him in a school. Like, you know, there is this school where the minister has been given an order to go and out in the school. School funds. Because in this judgment, he's saying this principal and the head teacher has been there for 20 years. Tell me, even you can talk, you cannot be educated for 20 years. Surely you need to also to grow. So the <laughs> issue is can we have a policy where you are told, my friend, after three years, go to another place? But let us not keep that kind of thing. Okay. 
I want to mention something here. Mm -hmm. I, I, I need to come to Evelyn. Yeah, it's okay. something very important. Mm -hmm. The other thing that the ministry must take very quickly, and that's why you find they are helpless. They must out stamp authority on the issue of management. The schools have resisted to form boards of management. They are accusing Musa Odunda. Mm -hmm. I want to tell the minister and I want to tell Kenyans that we are ready to cover the entire country. Everything within one month. Mm -hmm. And I wish the minister can wake up this morning and order that any school that will have a board of management by the end of this month, they, their accounts should be frozen. They have that power. So that we don't have people, so one person running, uh, issuing fee structures in the name of that I have a board. They are not okay. boards. All right. Uh, Evelyn, there seems to be a malay of issues here that really it's difficult to even get to the bottom of where to begin. Uh, there is a student uh, 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 teacher ratio, right. which is obviously a challenge. Yeah. And like you mentioned earlier, you have a teacher who has maybe 103 students. That's obviously too much. And uh, again, on the other hand, we have an issue with the quality. Right. of teachers that are in the classrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, where does the government begin to deal with this? Is it by, first of all, increasing the number of teachers? Is it also, first of all, by increasing the quality of teachers despite the, uh, the, the, the ratio not being correct? Yeah. Um, if you look at the NESP, um, the, the National Education Sector Plan, um, these issues have actually been addressed, and I think they have uh, investment, um, several investment plans mm -hmm. in in addressing the question of quality of education. And one of those things is, of course, to reform the curriculum for, for teacher education. Now, um, I think that um, the first thing that we need to look at is the quality of the teachers who are already in post. Because if we can, if we can be able to uh, empower those teachers to teach effectively, the, the question of, of ratio, you know, research doesn't really say much about you know, um, effectiveness of teaching and the number of, of children. Although, logically, you can tell um, if a teacher goes to class and they have 30 children, it is easier to deal with those 30 children than 100 and, and, and So, in three. other words, the bigger so, evil here is yeah, the quality is of the teacher quality of the teacher. Yes. Yes. Is the quality of the teacher. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and I want to support what uh, Musa Ndunda has said. What, you know, what is not measured can, cannot be done. You, we can't know if, if we keep on increasing the salaries of teachers without seeing the return on investment, what are we doing? We are, you know, we are, um, we are actually an, uh, empowering that teacher who is a good teacher, but we are also rewarding mediocrity mm. uh, on this teacher who is not, who is not doing their He's job. Not doing their job. Yeah, He's because, not even yeah, to do their so job. So I think that the way to go is to have everybody accountable. In any case, when the Teacher Service Commission employs teachers, they write letters to every individual of them. So the, this, the question of teachers coming together is, uh, is important because unions are, are important uh, mm. to take care of the interests of the teachers. But when there is a question of quality, I think that uh, our unions really need to begin to look again as to why are, do we have teachers in the first place. We have teachers because we want quality of education. We want teachers to do um, effective teaching in the classroom. Mm. And that is not happening, at least in many of the schools, mm. and particularly in schools in, 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 in rural areas. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, even in urban centers, we have schools that are coming up in slums that have no structures at all. Teachers are not trained, but parents are willing to take their children there. The question is, what is going on? And yet these same parents are paying taxes to the government to provide education for their children. All right. Um, Musao, let's, let's look at something else because I see time is really fast moving. And this is in regards to Form 1 selection. Um. And the fact that uh, there are those new rules that have come up that now, um, of course, you, you have come out to say that you're not in agreement. Uh, I want to tell you that, uh, one, I want to thank the ministry very much because uh, of coming up with a such guidelines. You see, one thing you must realize is that there are parents like me. I have a child in a private school. I have Kenyans who cannot afford to go to private schools. Surely, you cannot, you cannot a right thinking Kenyan will not say, since my child was, has done so well, she also enjoy the same facilities. Because if a child in the rural areas <coughs> of this country has done so well, that child should also be given an opportunity of joining these things. And that's why we have said, let nobody start raising issues saying that uh, the ministry regulation uh, relating for one selection is not good. I want to salute the ministry. They have done a good thing because one, 
let us have fairness. If you look at the, the in, out of the nine, 950,000 students who are, I mean, the candidates. Who sat for the who exams. For the exam. Look at the ratio of the private schools. They are very few. Not that we don't represent the parents association, I mean the parents of private schools, mm -hmm. but as a Kenyan also you must mind about those children. Let me tell you, and I want to tell you, I have seen parents, one of my good friends, a parent, few years ago, he made a drastic move because he really wanted to do a practical part of it. And he told his, 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 his child, he had gotten around 420. Mm -hmm. And he told his son, you are not going to that national school, I want to take you to a rural school. A day school. And I can tell you for free, my friend, after four years, this young guy scored an A. He not been in that kind of place. So the thing is, it's not that when you go to Alliance, you go to whatever, is when you can buy this kind of place. Let us also be patriotic. Let us allow even the children from other places. We, there was a policy that the ministry developed in 2005, and we were part of that policy. In that policy, we wanted to see how can we mix the, these the children who have done so badly, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, who have done something, I mean, who have not uh, performed so well mm -hmm. in, uh, in, uh, in KCP, and those who have done, why don't we mix them? And I can tell you, there is a case, and I'm happy I have it in our file. There was a student who was selected in 2006. Two of them. They went to one of the national schools, I don't want to mention the school. This student had gotten uh, 300 and, uh, no, around 200 and something, 300 and something. 302. The child was taken to one of the national schools. Four years down the line, she was there with those who had gotten 400 and above. Four years down the line, the child scored a straight A. Whereas in the other area, this other one had gotten C. And I have those statistics. So who tells you that when you get 400 and above, you must go to those kinds of things? Let us also be fair, so that we also give this student from mm -hmm. other families an opportunity of saying, I went to a rural school, but now I'm enjoying the facilities. So the minister, I'm telling okay. him, keep up. Okay. Let them stand on their feet. All right, Evelyn, Can I just on add that? on that? Yeah, um, on. I, I really think that when we talk about equity, we are talking about, um, you know, every child getting an opportunity. And I think that the whole concept of, of national schools is, is something that we need to go back to and mm -hmm. think about how did it come about? And, and who is... You know, why do we want some children to go to national schools and others go to Kamiritu secondary school? Uh, you know, in, in, in my thinking, we need to raise the level of all these other schools to the level of the alliances and the Starehes and all these schools because when we do that, then you will not be seeing this kind of scrambling where every parent is running to take their children to alliance. No every parent knows that if, I, if you take a child to a good school, they are likely to do well. Mm. And, and, and some schools are condemned, you know, they're, they're already condemned. And yet, we have teachers who've been trained with those who are in alliance. Mm, they, they, are, they are Kenyan schools. They are accountable to the Ministry of Education, just like Any all these national mm -hmm. schools. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the discussion for me should be, how do we lift the quality of all the other schools? Make sure that every school has a lab, every school has you know, a library, the has the facilities, facilities that so mm -hmm. that the children can do well. Mm -hmm. The fact that children are able to get 300 in some very poor schools, in my view, are much better than those kids who are in private schools and are getting 400, mm -hmm. because they are being spoon-fed. They are getting all almost everything that they need. But this child who is who is walking to school in the morning and back in the Maybe evening even under tree, and, and learning, and learning under, under a tree, under a tree <laughs> uh, is actually struggling to get um, the 300. And I'm not surprised that the 302 uh, kid who, who scored go to a straight A. Mm. There, is, there, is no, there, there is nothing like these ones can, are not performers. Every child can learn. Mm. And that is the whole concept of equity. Mr. Uh, Undunda, how just, do we... Just, how just do to we, add. Mm -hmm. Just to add, because it's very important, mm -hmm. before I lose the track. Uh, what I want to mention, the government did a very big blunder to classify some schools as yeah. national and others. I believe national schools is bringing national cohesion. During our days, and those were some uh, early 1970s, I remember I being in the rural areas of Cumberland, I was able to apply and go and mingle with the other students in other corners of this country. So the issue of national, you should not say these are national schools. National means anybody in school in this Republic of Kenya should be a national school so that we are able freely to mix with other tribes. And that's how we are going to bring national cohesion. Mm. We should not just be talking about few national. Well, how can you be? In this Republic of Kenya, 50 years down the line, 
Surely we cannot be talking about 105 national schools. What are these national? What is that national? Mm -hmm. Can we invest equally in terms of investment, even in those schools, to lift them up so that they can also be in that status? Right. How do we en ensure that? Because one of the things that uh, possibly was putting a lot of pressure on uh, parents and on these schools is, is, is the issue of ranking. Because what that yeah. does, it immediately tells you this is a better school than the other. Uh, do you think, uh, Musal, that that was a good move to remove ranking? I want to salute, uh, I want to salute the ministry. Because, let me tell you, the, I, I, really, I was watching TV and I said, Matiangi is the man now who, has, who is coming in to reform TV. Why should you be reading so-and-so is number one? Surely, that is out. But, but the we, we, is this. We, we remove ranking, but we still look at students and say this was it's the okay, greatest performance. It's okay, it's okay, but the thing is this, my, my brother. <clears throat> you must realize that schools are not equal. We, we will only talk about competing where there is equality. Mm -hmm. In other words, the schools in the rural areas that cannot access uh, the, the good facilities, they are also on the same path. So what the use of students, look at, and even look at the analysis. Mm -hmm. Look at the analysis that was, uh, I mean, the analysis of the care of NEC. I was, we, were, we were analyzing it in the office. And you realize, majority of those schools are not in the rural areas. Majority of them are down, I mean, majority of them are in the urban towns mm -hmm. because that's what's happening. Good, you know, buses and whatever and whatever. So, this is our suggestion. If we want to bring back ranking, I want to propose to the ministry. Let us rank all the academies to know which is the best academy. Mm -hmm. Let us rank all the rural schools. Mm -hmm. Let us rank all the urban towns. And then now we can know which is that. So it's a good move that was brought for ranking to be removed. It was that one. In fact, they bring it today. We'll go to court and stop it. Okay. Because why should you? Why should <laughs> you start ranking? <laughs> <laughs> Ibn, your take on the ranking uh, issue. <laughs> you know, my take on the ranking is bigger than just ranking. My my issue is actually the examination itself, because I think that um, you you know the 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 exam assumes that all children are the same. Mm -hmm. You will be surprised that even deaf children are examined. Yeah. With the same examination. Yes, with the same examination. So I, I am an advocate of differential teaching and therefore differential assessment. And I, and I think last, last week when we talked about assessment, I said that perhaps we need to rethink this summative evaluation at the end of eight, eight years. years. You, give a child two, you give a child two hours mm -hmm. to give you all that they have learned. It's, In it's inadequate. Mm -hmm. We can't judge <laughs> a child by bad. that. And I think that we need to begin to help the teachers to be able to assess their children in a way that will then make sure that, one, we know the aptitude of the children and therefore we can be able to place them in high school, mm -hmm. but also help the teacher to be able to change their pedagogies, if need be, so that they can address the, the, <clears throat> the needs of the child. The whole question of ranking is assuming that we are all the same. On the level playing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's really unfair mm -hmm. because... First of all, there is the question of resource differentiation. Mm -hmm. There is the schools that have resources and those that don't. Mm -hmm. There is a question of how many teachers. Some mm -hmm. of the schools have more teachers than they need. Mm -hmm. Others have hardly, Very yeah, more, more than facilities. enough. Facilities. Yeah, facilities and mm -hmm. all this kind. And then aptitude. Mm -hmm. So in the 21st century, the teacher is not coming to give knowledge. They are helping these children to learn how to learn. Mm -hmm. and, and that is where we should really be looking at. Not for the children to regurgitate what the information that has been given to them, but demonstrate what they can do with that kind of information that mm -hmm. we have given yeah, You see, Bwana Kitonga, I, I want to concur with my sister here. Uh, one thing that I, we must understand, surely all these things that you're asking and Kenyans are asking, they are in the law. And I can tell you I want to salute the team that we were with mm -hmm. that came up with the Basic Education Act. Because section, section 42 is very clear. It says the structure of education shall be restructured in such a way that we tap those kids. This business of sitting down for one hour and you are told you have scored this, that is crummy. That is not an examination. We must change. And actually the proposal we had was, can we, we must, we must uh, examine you at a certain level. Look at, I remember like my father. This, my, my old Mze went up to study before. But if you see him writing that kind of English, you'll be surprised. Because we had something called com, uh, uh, common interest. Let us check your competence at a particular level. Mm -hmm. At study before, we said, can we have your competence? We want to see how you can perform. But somebody could argue yeah. that's the same thing you do with standard date. It's yeah. a competence no, 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 level at yeah. standard date. To go to form one. Let and at form four, to go to university. Right. Let me tell you, my brother. <laughs> surely, common sense will tell you, you cannot be examined for eight years. We must check whether you know. And that's why I'm, I agree with the Wenzel. Our children learning, the question is no. 
Even they cannot be able to read and write simply because you are just cramming. And the people, I, I, we, 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 we have done a, a study in our office. And uh, we called several students. And they had, uh, these young girls, they, they, they made us laugh. And I was asking them, yes, you scored B. But can you remember, can you remember uh, whatever you're being told? The child was telling me, even I cannot remember, I was just studying, I mean, I was just revising for examination. So the, when you see performance, you must realize these children are only for that particular period, and then they forget. Okay. Let us change, mm -hmm. and first of all, I am appealing to the government, the ministry, let them re-look at section 42. Let it be implemented fully so that we check the competence of our children. Let us stop this business of national examinations. Yes, it's important at least to have a, a national mean. But let us first of all see how do we improve the performance of our children by at least a level. And we gave this proposal one for uh, two years. I mean, if, I mean, it was around uh, three, uh, three years in primary, lower primary, let's check competence. We go to standard seven. We had removed, as a tax force, we had removed uh, the issue of um, uh, the issue of. Um, Standard uh, eight. Mm -hmm. So we said, hey, let's, have, let's have at standard eight. We can, I mean, at seven, let's now check the competence at that level. So we went to secondary. Why should you wait until four years and then you examined? We should also look at the issue of compulsory subjects. Surely, why should somebody tell you you must pass in these subjects for you to be this way? Mm -hmm. Let's allow, let's open. There are people, I wish those guys now who are really uh, calling the shows in this country through these dramas and whatever. Why don't you be examined for on this kind of field? Yeah. My, my sister comes from Litvari. We know Litvari is one area where there is, uh, uh, you have examined in terms of marathon. You know, <laughs> what does it cost for you to tell me what I'm saying? Do breathe in, breathe out. And, and then, then what? <laughs> All right, Evelyn, uh, in terms of uh, now the education system, do we need yeah. a total overhaul yeah. of the 844 system, which of course has been a huge burden for our children and again has not yielded the results that were expected or uh, put before, you know, uh, what it was being put in place? Um, the the 844 system as right. a system. The system, the st I have, like I told you last time, I have no problem with the structure. We, we can put structures however we want. We can have it 644 four or whatever it is. But I think the system needs an overhaul. Because our system, uh, our curriculum is, is based on, um, uh, is based on it's, it's very teacher-centered. So the teacher is the one giving information. And at the end of eight years the teacher comes to demand that information mm. okay mm. but what are we what are we seeing even among the youth um we are seeing that people are gifted differently and and there are now ways of being able to enhance that through through classroom interaction so i think that we need to completely overhaul the system actually step outside of that system and look at what are the needs of this country at this time we are talking about national cohesion. We are talking about uh, value systems that we have. Corruption is killing us as a country. But we are also talking about skills that will help these children to become members of a global environment. Mm. So what are the skills? It is not you know, regurgitating uh, science facts. It is not regurgitating mathematics and, 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 you know, and history. Physics and history. It, it, all these things. It is actually learning to learn. You know, the children being able to mine their own information. Because I'm telling you, when we begin to introduce the laptops, what is going to happen? If, if teachers are not careful, the children will overtake them <laughs> in terms of knowledge. And because would that, would children, that be a problem? Because at the end of the day, is, I mean, what do you want them that to is, have? Is that knowledge. is not necessarily a problem, but mm. the teacher needs to know their place in the classroom, that they are the facilitators of knowledge mm -hmm. and not the, pro, you know, not, not the suppliers of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So we need to reorganize our curriculum in such a way that it will help the children to actually take an active role in the learning um, so that at the end of it, they appreciate the system. Do you know what happens in schools now? When children come to the end of, of, of the course, be it class eight or form four, they ban books. Mm -hmm. They ban books I'm and say, I am done. Done with this. You know, I'm done with this. Mm. Why is school such a terrible, terrible experience that when children are moving out, they want to leave and forget about it and completely? Destroyed. Because it doesn't appeal to, you know, to, to what, what we now are as human beings. We are global citizens. We have different sources of information. Mm -hmm. But how do you consolidate that into a pedagogical skill that will then help this child to be able to move on in their education. Okay. Yeah, the, other thing, the other thing that uh, I think I just want to add there before you ask me the other question. 
Uh, I think uh, I've just, uh, I was the other day in Uganda and even in South Africa, and there's something that they have introduced in schools which uh, we need also to look at it. Uh, the issue of psychometric assessment. Let's understand that assessment. Let's understand the kind of children who are there. Mm. Because some of the children we are condemning and telling them, you people, you cannot, uh, uh, you, you, I mean, you are not performing whatever, it is because we are not coming up with a way to identify what is in these children. Mm. And I think the government should address this. Now as we go to the review of curriculum, mm. let, us, let us open up. Let's see how can we do it. Because some of the children who are suffering is because we don't have that kind of thing. Mm. And I am happy that now Uganda, our neighbors here, they have not introduced that kind of approach. Mm. And I think the issue of trying to, I mean, to, uh, to have that psychometric assessment to assess the competence of these children to understand them well i think we can come in a very good way okay evelyn as we wind up there's the they say that when two elephants fight it's the grass that suffers and uh, we have a strike that has been threatened by the unions yep. if uh, you know certain things are not put in place and how is this conflict between tsc and the unions uh, expected <coughs> to finish yet at the end of the day really it is a child who's used uh, as the bait yes um you know it's a question of leadership conflict resolution um you you know i you know my thinking is this and 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 it applies to all the conflicts that musao has has, has raised mm -hmm. because um when 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 you have a government that doesn't that doesn't listen and you have a union that has to have its way regardless then you, you you really are in a situation that you can solve the problem but if we if we can be able to actually get these people to a round table and say okay so what are the issues really and 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 as he says we need to be patriotic at, uh, up to some point that parents are paying taxes we all pay taxes and part of that taxes goes into the education sector it goes into paying the salaries of teachers would i want to pay a teacher who doesn't tell me what they have put into the system i don't think so mm -hmm. so you know the whole question of accountability really needs to come in and we need to have some very courageous discussions around what needs to happen we cannot keep on having a teacher strike every year mm -hmm. and the ministry sitting helpless and the tsc breathing Pushing fire mm -hmm. you, you know we we can't win Mm -hmm. and, and as you say, the ch it's the children that suffer. Right. So I think that um, you know, all, all of us who, are, who have a stake in education really need to come out and say what, what, what we think. We, parents become helpless, teachers become, you know, some would want to go back to school but they are afraid the union will think that they are not supporting the union and all these kinds of things. But at the end of the day, it's a question of leadership. Okay, Musa Ndunda, in terms of solutions, as we wind up, what solution do we need to solve this conflict between the unions and TSC? Now, the solution number one, uh, we must differentiate. I want to start right, off for, uh, right from uh, the management and the teaching staff. Yeah. The issues of principals and their deputy principals and senior teachers, the law, the government, the parliament must amend TSC Act for them to be directly under the Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. That one must be done and done in a hurry. So that we, first of all, we, the ministry has control over the resources mm -hmm. that the government is getting. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, TSC. I want to salute TSC because now I can see the new uh, CEO and, the, and, the, and the, the commissioners are now stamping the authority. I, time has come that yes, Teachers are required to pay, and I, I just concur with my sister. Teachers, uh, they need good salaries, they need whatever. But also, the issue of accountability. That one, we cannot escape. They must tell us clearly that this is what is supposed. And I believe unions as professional organizations, they have all the duty of advising their members. Mm -hmm. Because one of the problems that we are having, and that's why you find the ministry is helpless, is because a deal, a district education officer or a county education officer cannot touch a teacher. The next thing, they are being harassed left and right by the union members down there. So these are issues that we must separate and get to know. The management of schools is the work of the ministry and the government. It's not a work of the unions. And they cannot poke their noses of issues. Yes, we are stakeholders, but we are limited. We cannot just be getting into some issues that are not there. That's why we are saying we must change on this. Thing. Number two, yes, the president, I want to salute our head of state and uh, the deputy because they called these people for a negotiation. Let TSC not be that adamant yeah. because the president, you know, we are the ones who are feeling this kind of animosity. Let TSC sit down. They are not the ones who allocate the money. The president gave a directive. Can they sit down in a round table, agree, Find and give teachers? Mm -hmm. Because one of the international standards is for teachers to be paid well. We are saying, let teachers also be paid. Let them be motivated. But even if they are motivated, let them also 
please let them deliver give quality and the issue of absurdism they must the, 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 the and I guess that can be dealt with with uh, performance contracts. Definitely. And, uh, right. the, yeah. Let me take this opportunity to say thank you very much, Musaun Dunda, for uh, coming to the studio. And also Evelyn Jepkimei, who's an education expert, and also just talking about education. Thank you very much. And to you at home, thank you for your participation. Let me just read a few texts that have come through. And there's John who says the government has mistreated teachers. How do you think the teachers will pack up from uh, their frustrations? Because again, there is the issue of uh, remuneration. Of course, if you're not happy uh, when, when you're working, then really delivery is going to be a problem. Uh, there is the Empire who says if anyone is waging war on teachers without addressing their welfare, will achieve nothing. Respect uh, teachers. And there's quite a number uh, of more tweets that have come through, but I'm not able to read them because of time. And this is where we're going to wind up Morning Express. Thank you so much for joining us. For those of us on KTN News, we've got News Hour coming up in just a few minutes. For those on KTN Home, thank you for staying with us and uh, have yourselves a great day day.